I did my problem on climate change and greenhouse gases and the effects of them. So, um, the electricity production causing climate change. Ele electricity production was 25% of 2020 greenhouse gas emissions. Electricity production generates the second largest share of greenhouse gas emissions. 60% of our electricity comes from burning fossil fuels, mostly coal and natural gas. Generating electricity with solar power instead of fossil fuels can dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions, particularly being carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases, which are produced when fossil fuels are burned, lead to rising global temperatures and climate change. They cause climate change by trapping heat, which in, in turn, or turn affects various species in already arid climates. The, these greenhouse gases emissions also contribute to extreme weather, wildflowers, droughts, and food supply disruptions. Our city, Manhattan Beach, is a great example of this issue. Our city is having colder winters and hotter summers, and unpredictable temperature drops or rises. For example, during spring break, which is early April, according to weatherspark.com, the average temperature in April in Manhattan Beach is 53 to 69 degrees. But there was a week in April where the weather went all the way up to 95 degrees and then dropped dramatically a week later. This is not normal and is caused by climate change. We need to stop these greenhouse gas emissions caused by, caused by fossil fuels by using other sources of energy. Solar energy, windmills, and geothermal energy are great, great examples of this. Now the solutions. First is solar panels. In 1883, American inventor Charles Fritz made the first solar cells from selenium. A great form of solar energy to reduce the production of greenhouse gases is solar panels, whether they are used in your home, your office, or practically anywhere while requiring electricity. A solar cell is made of two types of semiconductors called p-type and n-type silicon. The p-type silicon is produced by adding atoms like boron or gallium that have one less electron in their outer energy level than, than does silicon. Sunlight hits the solar panels and creates an electric field. The electricity generated flows to the edge of the panel into a conductive wire. The conductive wire brings electricity to the inverter where it is transformed from DC electricity to AC, which is used to power buildings. Lastly, solar panels produce voltage by means of chemical reactions. They contain electrodes and electrolyte, which may be a paste or liquid. Solar cells convert the energy in sunlight to el electrical energy. They contain a material such as silicon that absorbs light and gives us electrons. And basically, a personal example of solar of solar energy use is my mom's old house, which is the one circled in red, and um, other houses in the neighborhood that's circled in blue. Um, they have solar panels installed and only use solar energy. My mom had almost no carbon footprint as she had an electric car where she where she charged using this energy. I don't know if my neighbors had an electric car also, but either way, they still have decreased their carbon footprint amongst others. The power of solar panels can save our world from all the issues it faces and gives a chance for our planet to heal. Our sun is so powerful and we need to realize we can do almost everything in our daily life without, imagining, without damaging our world and increasing climate change. My next example of a solution is windmills. The very first electricity generating wind turbine was built in 1887 in Cleveland, Ohio by Charles F. Brush. Wind turbines operate on a, on a simple principle. The energy, that wind, the, the energy in the wind turns two or three propeller-like blades around a rotor. The rotor is connected to the main shaft, which spins a generator to create electricity. The rotating wind turbines harness the kinetic energy of the moving air, which is converted into electricity. The wind turbine technology relies on chlorine chemistry, which is also used in the production of innovative energy sources like wind turbines, solar panels, and hybrid car batteries. Windmills are used in places like the top of smooth, rounded hills, open plains and water, and mountain gaps that funnel and, inten and intensify wind. They are also often used in farms for the purpose of cutting the farmer's bill electricity bill. Electricity generated from a wind farm will travel into a transmission substation where it is stepped up by high voltage in the region of 150 to 800 kilovolts. It is distributed along the electricity gr power grid to the consumer. Windmills would be great in our city, Manhattan Beach, and many coastal cities because the amount of wind produced near the ocean and could help create energy for many stores and places in the area. Next for the solution is geothermal energy. Um, the first geothermal power plant was invented by Prince Piero Ginor Conti in Ladero, Lo Italy. Geothermal energy is, pr is electricity produced from heat within the Earth's core. It is, surrounded, it is stored in rocks and fluids in the center of the Earth. Geothermal energy is a renewable source because heat is continuously produced inside the Earth. 
People often use geothermal heat for bathing, to heat buildings, and to generate electricity. Hot water is pumped from deep underground through a well under high pressure. When the water reaches the surface, the pressure is dropped, which causes the water to turn into steam. The steam spins a turbine, which is connected to a generator that produces electricity. This is a great example of renewable source in chemistry. In our state, California, there are a total of four operating geothermal power plants in California with an installed capacity of 2,693 megawatts. The largest concentration of geothermal plants is located north of San Francisco in the Geysers Geothermal Resource Area in Lake and Sonoma counties. It has been produce, producing electricity since the 1960s by using dry steam, one of the only places in the world for this resource. This form of, this form of clean energy is very convenient since our Earth's core will forever produce heat. And that is it. Oh, and on the right, the bottom right, is the photo of the um, dry steam geothermal energy near um, San Francisco. And that's it.